had a question in regards to, I guess it's a more general question. I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding the, the probability aspect of these models. Um, I, I guess starting from what we did last time with the um, variation of autoencoders and then moving to GANs. Mm-hmm. So um, I think we were talking about how the distribution of the data needs to be normal. And I'm trying to understand what does it actually mean and why does it matter? Do we mean that the the classes are normally distributed or the pixels in each image? Uh, no. So there is a difference between variational autoencoders and GANs. And what are they? For variational autoencoders, you still have a likelihood. So you're working with a likelihood. But then the problem was computing that likelihood is not easy. It's not tractable. Because of these neural networks being nonlinear functions, it's not easy to integrate them out. Okay. And by integrating, we are basically trying to explore all the possible weights that will give the best likelihood? No. So you are changing the input to your network. Oh. So you are putting a you are putting a distribution on the input to a neural network. So a Z, we also have it, we had it in the previous slide. So you had a hidden or unobserved, unobserved state, that was Z. That's a vector, it's a low dimensional vector. You are putting a distribution on that. In both cases, for variational autoencoders and for GANs, you are putting a distribution on your hidden state. What does it mean putting a distribution on it? Doing like, like pixel distribution? No, there is no pixels at that layer. Oh, sometimes it's I just a, a distribution. It's just a, it's just a vector. Maybe it's a 100-dimensional vector. Okay. Okay, so you have a 100-dimensional vector. You're putting a distribution on it. And that's a simple distribution. It's mm-hmm. normal with mean zero and identity. Okay. Okay. And both of them, both GANs and variational autoencoders, are going to take that distribution and push it through a nonlinear function, which is a neural network. Mm-hmm. The first framework, variational autoencoder, is trying to integrate out Z. You don't care about Z. Okay, you care about your likelihood in the end because you're going to do maximum likelihood. Okay. And when we say likelihood, do we, what are we looking for? Um, I, I get that we have this vector that is normally distributed, like hand dimensional. Likelihood of what? What, like? Um... It's the likelihood of your images. Basically, there is a distribution, there is an underlying distribution that only nature knows. Okay. And the data that are being generated by the nature, these are the real data. There is a real distribution. We don't know that. We don't know the distribution. We are just sam- we just see samples from that distribution. What you want to do is you want to write a model that makes those images more likely. And how do you make it more likely? By tuning your parameters. And do we compare them to the that normally distributed hand-dimensional vector giving an image? No, those normal distributed uh, distribution, it's an assumption that you made. That's your prior assumption. And you want to get rid of that. You want to integrate it out. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think it through. So X is a data set, which has some distribution um, by nature. Mm-hmm. And then... See, you have a data set. This data set is being sampled from some real distribution, okay? That only nature knows. We don't know about it, okay? We just see samples and we are seeing N examples. And these are your examples. Maybe your examples are the MNIST data set. They are digits. These are, now we are in the space of pixels. X is, a, is an image, okay? Mm-hmm. Each one of these is an image. But then the problem is you don't want to work with the space of images because this is too high dimensional, okay? Mm-hmm. It is better to work in a lower dimensional space maybe in the space of some Z. This is just unobserved and we are seeking help from it. This is just to there to help us. Okay. Okay. This has no meaning. This has no real meaning. This is not images. This is just a vector in maybe dimension 100. Okay. And then you're putting a distribution on that and you're putting a simple distribution on it. You're making some assumptions that if I generate samples from this distribution, I want it to be a simple distribution so that I can generate samples from it, okay? So maybe you put a normal distribution here and you know how to sample from normal, it's easy, okay? But then the idea is 
if I know Z, I can push it through a neural network, a deconvolution neural network, and give me images, okay? That I know how to do. And we just saw it. We just saw an example. Yeah. We took Z and we pushed it through a neural network and that gave us some images. And these are parameterized. Initially, if you generate from this likelihood, from this distribution, they are going to be very bad, okay? Because these parameters are really bad. So you're going to generate some very bad looking images. Mm. The idea is, in the end, you want to maximize your likelihood. You want to maximize your likelihood. Actually, it's a marginal likelihood. And I'm going to tell you why it is marginal. It is marginal because you're marginalizing the distribution that you put on Z out. Okay, so you're integrating it out. So you're getting rid of that. So you need to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. And then that's going to give you a likelihood. As soon as you have a likelihood, because it is parameterized, you can try to tweak the parameters of your model such that it is fitting the distribution of your data so that it makes your data look more likely according to this model. Okay, mm -hmm. so by likely, I mean, if you take an image and put it here, it has a high probability okay, mm -hmm. of happening. So you want to make these images more probable, more likely. Initially, they are not going to be likely because the parameters are really bad. Mm -hmm. But as you keep changing it, your model is fitting the data, okay? Mm -hmm. And as soon as you fit the data, you're done. Why? Because these parameters are going to be in a good location. And now you can generate samples from it. You take a sample from this simple distribution in R100, you generate a vector, you take that, you push it through your decoder, and that's going to give you an image. And these are the images that are going to come out of it. Makes okay? sense. But what is the problem? This is intractable. So that's why you need to do some math. The posterior is intractable, and you're going to approximate the posterior using a variational distribution. And that's going to be your variational distribution. In the end, rather than maximizing the likelihood, you're going to maximize the lower bound of your likelihood. Remember that. OK? So this is just mechanics. It's just the loss function? Yes. So that's going to give you your objective function. Okay. And then uh, the rest of it is just technical. You just want to generate samples and write down your objective function. Okay. So this is manipulating the objective function to be easier to solve? Yes. And actually doing Monte Carlo estimate, because this is an integral. You cannot work with integrals, but you can work with samples. You do Monte Carlo estimation. Okay, and then you can play around with your Z dimension. Okay, that's variational distributions. You still have this likelihood framework. You want to make your, your data look more likely. You want to make them have a higher probability of happening. And when we compare the image, like the produced image to the actual images, what do we use? Do we use um, cost entropy or... No, that's exactly why you had to go through this pain. I see. Actually, cross entropy for classification is also a likelihood. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this maximum likelihood framework, most of the statistics is just maximum likelihood. And cross entropy is a special class of maximizing the likelihood. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then uh, people came along and said, do you really need to do maximum likelihood estimation? Can you solve this problem without likelihood? And the idea was that you are really good at discriminating. For neural networks, you are really good at discriminating. Right. Okay? You are really good at classification problems. Can you turn your generative process to a classification process? And the idea is very similar to before up until this point. You have a simple distribution on some vector space. These are 100 dimensional. And then you are going to put a nonlinear function that takes Z and it's going to generate images. Okay. If I give you Z, you push it through your neural network, you're going to give me G. You're going to give me X. Sorry. You take a vector, you push it through your neural network, that's going to give you an image. This could be simple, but the distribution that comes out of G could be very complicated. Am I right? Yeah. Because this G is a nonlinear function. And we want to train this, we want to train the parameters of this generative process this neural network somehow, and you don't want to use your likelihood. Because it's you don't want to like do, before. You don't want to do variational inference because it is intractable, it is an approximation, etc. So the idea here was very simple. Okay, you give me an image, it is fake, 
coming out of the generator and you are giving me some images that are generated from the real data distribution. Okay, some images are fake, some images are real. So let's go ahead and use our discriminator to discriminate between the two, okay? So you're gonna have a discriminator saying, this is a real image, that's a fake image. This is a real image, that's a fake image. And then they are gonna try to compete with each other. Okay, one is generating images to make your discriminator make mistakes. And the other one is trying to discriminate between fake and real images. That's the simple idea, but there is actually math behind it. Once you write down the math and do some proofs, etc., you're gonna end up with a divergence. You're gonna end up with a dis distance between two distributions, the data distribution and the generator distribution. So there is actually math going on here. It's not a game anymore. It's not a mean max problem. It's actually trying to make your generated distribution look like data distribution. You want to minimize the distance between the two. And that's a measure of the distance. Why is the reason, what's the reason we're not using um, KL divergence? Are we using uh, Jensen, which is a special case or a different variation of that? Actually, uh, that's the place where a lot of contributions are happening in the literature. Mm -hmm. So you can play around with your loss function. It doesn't have to be this. But if you choose this, that's going to give you your Jensen divergence. You can have different divergences here. You can have different distances. Okay. okay? So GANs is a different paradigm from maximum likelihood. For maximum likelihood, you are maximizing your likelihood, as the name suggests. For GANs, you are minimizing the distance between the data distribution and the generated distribution. Aren't we measuring the distance between the, um, the Z initially and the... Well, I guess we are measuring the distance between the images in uh, autoencoder. So... so Think of Z as something that is there to help you. Mm -hmm. Okay. You Just don't want to, yes, you don't want to work with uh, images. Right. You don't want to work in the space of images because first of all, that's in the space of pixels, and the second of all, it's uh, it's high dimensional. So how do we generate an image once we we train the model and we we have a Z that gives us the likelihood? Do we take a word and move it to Z? Oh. No, the way that you generate, you know how to generate samples from Z. Okay. Right. You can generate easily from a normal distribution. Okay. You mm -hmm. can generate samples. And you take those samples and you push them through your G. And that's going to give you images. Basically, mm -hmm. what's going to happen is what we just did here. You generate Z. This is simple to generate. Once you generate it, given that the parameters of your neural network are already trained, if you take Z, push it through your neural network, that's going to give you an image. So how do you have any control over what you generate? Uh, so, so for example, if we wanted to, in, in this example, when we had those three, um, nine images of the people with glasses, people without glasses. Oh, so I guess we converted them. Um, I guess we convolved them to Z and then sent them back. Yes, exactly. Oh, so that was one of the questions that Z. one of your friends asked. Let's say this is Z1, Z2, Z3. You average them out. That's going to give you a single Z. You take that Z, you push it through your generator, and that's going to give you this image. You can think of your generator as the decoder. Huh. Interesting. Makes so much more sense now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what is the difference again between the um, the likelihood that we're using in GANs and autoencoders? You're saying, you said that um, in GANs, we are measuring the distance between the... I forgot. Yeah, so that's for training. For training, you have two options. So both of the frameworks are going to do this. There is going to be a generative process like this, okay? Both autoencoders and GANs? Both GANs and uh, variational autoencoders, yes. Okay. A vector goes in and you're going to get an image out. That's mm -hmm. the generative process. Perfect. But then the problem is the parameters of these uh, neural networks, they are not trained. Initially, these convolution operations, they have parameters, am I right? Yep. They are in the wrong location. They're going to give you very bad images. They're going to give you noise. Uh, you have to train it. You have two options to train it. Either write down a loss function, either write down a likelihood function. And the likelihood, you can do maximum likelihood. That's going to give you variational autoencoder. Mm -hmm. Or you can compare the distance between the generated distribution oh and the real distribution. 
basically compare real and fake. Okay, that makes sense. Do we take into account the um, the classifier? So the class, I know we have the classifier in GANs that's supposed to detect if it's real or fake. So where does that come into play? That's for training. So the classifier is just for helping you to train the parameters this. of your generator. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, the discriminator is just there to discriminate between real and fake. That's the job of the discriminator. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a generated image. Oh, that's an image image. That's a real image. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So the um, the the classifier is just there to help the discriminator get the parameters, right? Or the generator, sorry. Yes. So the discriminator is just to train the generator. Oh, but once the training idea. is... Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. So yeah. once the training is done, then it's game over. You generate samples in the Z, push them through your deconvolution, mm-hmm. and that's going to give you images. Cool. So yeah, it's a good, whenever you're doing deep learning, okay, ask yourself these four questions. What is my data? Are they in the form of images? Are they in the form of text? Are they speech? What are they? What are my data? Are they labeled? Are they not labeled? And that's why I ask you guys to do data exploration. Okay? It's going to help you know what problem you're solving. So ask some questions from the data. Then say what type of model you want to write down. For instance, here you wrote this model down, the generator. Okay? Then the next question is, how are you going to train these parameters? What should be my loss function? What should be my... How do people actually write a loss function? It it, it feels really magical to me (laughs) that they choose the right... I guess the, the negative minus plus, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it just feels really magical. How do people actually come up with those things? No, it's not magical. I mean, for the loss function, you need to know your statistics a little bit. And most of the time it's likelihood, except for GANs, which is not a likelihood. I see. I'm wondering, I haven't saw that, but I'm wondering, do people use GANs with natural language processing as well to take, a, I guess, a vector of words um, convert them to Z. Well, I guess similar to GANs as what we just did to generate text. Uh, for text, things are much easier because for text, what is happening is that uh, you have those one hot vectors in the output. Okay, You want mm-hmm. to predict the next word, for instance. And uh, for that, a good distribution is the distribution that is coming out of your softmax. So basically for text, you know your likelihood, okay? Because we have the sentence? Because it's easy, because uh, because it's discrete. What comes out of a language model is discrete. They are words okay. and that you can sense. count them. It's like you have, a, uh, you have this many words in your dictionary, okay? Mm-hmm. So that's discrete. For images, if you want to generate them, they are not discrete, they're right. continuous. Okay, each pixel can have values from zero to one, from zero to 255, etc. So this is a continuous distribution. Text is discrete, images are continuous. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah, cool. Thanks a lot. Everything is yeah, much, sure. much more clear right now. Awesome. Cool. Uh, okay, have a good day. Yeah, see you next time.